Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review. Uh, I do apologise for the sleepiness in my eyes, but I'm knackered. It's 10 o'clock at night, I've been up since 5. And uh, come home, cracked on with the uh, finishing the bathroom and I thought I'll do a quick beer review before bed. So, at room temperature, which is in the days going into winter, you know, certain beers are much, much better at room temperature. So from... Um, Blue Monkey Brewery in Gilbrook, Nottingham, next to Ikea basically. This is uh, 99 Red Baboons. This is a dark ruby ale, 4.2%. And um, yeah, so it says here, a dark and interesting ale combining fruity oppiness with a dark malty side. Is it a porter or maybe a mild? You decide. Now this fella... Um, when I was at Sainsbury's uh, on the BWS Beers, Wines and Spirits section, hence why I do Beers, Wines and Spirit reviews, but um, this fella was one of the ones on the beer festival once, um, along with Castle Rock, you know, their Screech Owl, which both fantastic beers. And in the end, I actually got some of this. We found a crate that was accidentally hidden on purpose, maybe. And it went down to 25 pence a bottle. Who can't fault a beer at 25 pence a bottle? Anyway, let's crack it open. So, knackered tonight. Whew. But it's only 10 o'clock, you just like, yeah, yeah, I've been up since five, but you know, you think, so, I'm not going to bed too early, because you're losing part of your day. Now, I have had this before, obviously, but it's been years. I mean, it's been, well, it's been four years since I left Sainsbury's, and I think it's been six years since they had a beer festival, which is really sad that they've stopped doing it, because, to be fair, the beer festivals are great, you know. But, um, you know, obviously, supermarkets met their decisions. Uh, I don't agree with any of it, but, you know, I am but one person. So dark, nearly black in colour, especially in this crap light above me. Uh, a white head that's quite soon disappearing. Can't see any carbonation or lacing, but that's because it's so damn dark. Definite chocolate and coffee notes on the aroma. Like a lot of dark beers, the temperature suits you know the warm temperature in the kitchen uh which is probably about 21 degrees in here because it is quite warm to be fair i've had eating on quite a bit tonight and it certainly suits this type of beer i've just dropped put another drop in and you straight away you know it's bubbled up so yeah, certainly suits this type of beer, as it does with all dark beers, you know. If you get, for an experiment, if you know, if you watch this, get the same beer, drink it at, one at fridge temperature, cold, one at room temperature. Drink one, then drink the other. Watch the difference, massive difference. And that's across all types of beers. Uh, ciders and lagers, I'm not so sure if it would make a difference, you know, not overly, but certainly with beers, certainly with darker beers as well, it makes a hell of a difference. Now, don't get me wrong, you can drink anything at fridge temperature. I've been to the shed tonight and had a, had a, a swift um, one glass of prune juice wine. Can't take any more. I'm, I'm having a little third of pint glasses and uh, at this rate it's going to take me till next Christmas to drink it but yeah there's a limit to how much I'm, I'm never going to do it again but I'm not going to pour it down the drain either you know um, I just have to persevere as it were or if I've got no other beer in then it, I'll, hit, I'll hit it hard but I can't see me hitting it hard I don't think, I don't think my stomach could take it Yeah, 
definitely a warm temperature beer. You know, it makes such a, a difference having these dark beers at warm temperatures. And I've been I've been growing going through my beer collection tonight in the shed. Pulled another three out that I, I didn't see earlier, and brought them to the house so you know they can all be at room temperature. And then also I've got my two beer kits that I've got in the dining room at the moment, and the the wine's fine. It just needs to have the finings to it. But I've been that busy decorating that I haven't had the time to even have the finings. So the stabilizers have had a bit longer. It's not an, not an issue really. It just means that you know when I do do it, it won't take long for it to clear. And the beer kit also, because it's in the warm, it's bubbling away a bit more, and it's burning that sugar off, turning it to alcohol, which is good for me, because I don't want to be drinking anything that I can taste sugar. You know, that's a failed beer kit if you can take sh taste sugar. Or you just haven't let it, go, you know, brew for long enough. And uh, my own fault there, I left them in the shed, thinking that the shed, they'd, they'd brew in the shed before the weather got cold. But obviously, it didn't work out that way. So, lesson learnt, you know, even even um, experienced home brewers. I mean, I've been brewing now, wow, for probably 15 years, home brewing. And I've still not transcended from um, kit wines. I mean, I, I, kit beers and wines to, to doing it with grains, you know. I haven't gone that far yet. Um, I've got a busy life anyway, you know. In, and... I'd love to do it and go professional, you know, and have your own business doing it, but, you know, obviously competition's strong out there, and good breweries have gone to the wall, and obviously people lose a lot of money, so it's sad, sad if that's the case. I mean, we used to have one in uh, Nottingham called the Flipping Good Brewery, and uh, used to, they had a, a home brew shop at Gedling, and then it moved to Colic, I think that was a bit of a... Um, a money saving venture and ever since then then they I don't know what happened but obviously they've closed down the shops closed the brewery's closed and now their beers are brewed by another brewery in Nottingham Magpie Brewery are brewing their beers under the flipping good name unless they bought them out you know I mean I, but also the pubs uh, that were flipping good pubs shut as well at that time so I presume that um that they just obviously folded, you know, sad times for any, to see any company go, you know, uh, especially beer producers. I mean, Nottingham's lost a lot over the years. Um, iconic breweries such as Shipston's, they were massive. There's a micro brewery, Shipston's now, but the real Shipston's when it was around was a massive brewery. And we lost Robin Hood Ales as well, which is in Daybrook only meters from my house um hardy and anson's at kimberley nottingham uh, mansfield mansfield bitter you know that was an iconic brand last time i had that it was rancid you know obviously somebody's took the name and uh, oof, wasn't anywhere near as good although there's a smooth version and that was quite nice to be fair but anyway back to this is that nine minutes already Oh my god, I talk shite. So, uh, somebody on somebody on the channel commented tonight that Audi had dropped the price of their Green King Gangly Ghouls um, Halloween beer. The only Halloween beer they had this year, so I'm not happy with Audi for that. But they dropped it down to 50 pence a bottle. And although Dunkel Festa is a fantastic Halloween beer, Gangly Ghouls is also a fantastic Halloween beer. And at 50 pence, my God, that's a bargain. You know, so if you see it, buy as many as you can because it won't be around for long. They, you know, they, all they're doing is getting rid of um, stock for Christmas, you know, because obviously Christmas stock is going to be massive soon. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, you know, it'll go through the roof ready for Christmas. I mean, me myself, um, I'm trying to get decorating done and uh, I've just finished the bathroom now. Uh, I've got the stairs, I'm not doing all the stairs. Um, the walls are fine, I'm just doing all the white work, but the white work's chatty. You don't realise how bloody chatty your white work can get. And then I've got to do uh, a little bit of painting in there where, where people brush against the wall, you know, 
The rest of the room's fine, it was only done this year. I painted white, you can see behind me, yeah. These were white and I painted them a, a dark, a grey colour, but it looks blue in this light for some strange reason. Just to freshen them up before we rip them out and put new in. But whenever you can paint them and make them look good, why would you rip them out? You know, it's, um, don't want to be ripping out stuff that you don't need to rip out. But anyway, I can hear somebody walking above, so I'm, I'm sure someone's coming down to the toilet. For me, this is it's real quality. And at this um, temperature, it's a really nice beer. It says, is, is it a mild? Is it a porter? I ain't got a clue. All I know is it tastes great. A great dark beer. 4.2%, not too strong. Um, but nice taste to it, you know. And it's quality. You know, I can taste the quality in the beer. And when you're tired, bloody hell, it goes down well. You know, I could just nod off now. I'm at that time where I'm, I'm absolutely blooming exhausted and uh, yeah I can just fall asleep so um, out of five then well first off dark colour dark ruby colour close to black when it was full the glass was full white head soon disappeared couldn't see any carbonation or lacing chocolate and coffee notes on the aroma same on the taste a bit of roastiness in the taste and uh, I've got to say a lovely pint Even though it was only 500 mils, but we're not uh, bicker over 68 mils. So yeah, 99 Red Baboons, another quality beer from um, Blue Monkey Brewery. Glad to see you know Nottingham Brewery doing well. Um, out of five, oof. Never reviewed this before, so uh, you know first time review. I uh, loved it. Yeah, really nice. At this temperature in here, it's absolutely delightful. 4.2% uh, tastes stronger. Tastes like a 5.5% um, really nice. Can't fault it at all. Out of 5, 4.4 out of 5. Not quite top 10 material, but very close. Very nice, you know. Right, I need to go sleep now because I feel shattered. Thanks for watching. See you soon.